Hello everyone, welcome to the next installment in our series here, our introduction to the IDF to pH uh, toolkit. Um, we're going to pick up right where we left off in our discussion of windows, and in this, uh, probably the last uh, video in our series about windows, um, what, I, what I'd like to do now is, is take a, a, a few minutes to discuss the question of solar shading for windows and how that gets managed um, uh, both in the grasshopper side as well as in the uh, PHPP side. So uh, windows obviously are a, a peculiar part of our building envelope. They're, they're both going to lose a bunch of thermal energy over the course of the year, over the course of a winter in a cold climate. And then they're going to also gain a certain amount of, of energy. Um, and uh, uh, so they have this kind of dual character where they're both energy losing and energy gaining. And, and so we, we, we have to be cognizant of that and be sort of um, paying attention to both sides of the coin when it comes to windows. Um, one of the important factors in, in the solar gain through our windows is going to uh, obviously going to be the shading of those windows. Um, now, the, the way that the PHPP manages shading, so let's um, uh, go into our, our PHPP here. So I've got my PHPP. I'm going to take a look at this in some detail. Um, the way that the PHPP chooses to manage shading is through the application of what are called shading factors on a window by window basis. So the PHP is going to calculate a shading factor for each window uniquely in the project. So if we come into our windows here, our windows component, or our windows worksheet, uh, you see we have two windows in the scene. Let me scroll over to the left here. So we have win uh, window south one and window south two. So we have two windows in the scene. They both have the same parameter assignment. They're both on the south face of the, of the um, uh, the building here, um, and each one is going to have a certain shading factor applied to it. So where can we see how the shading factors are calculated? Well, we can come here into the shading worksheet, and notice on the shading worksheet that we have the same south window one and south window two, so the same windows that, that show up there. Um, and if we scroll to the right, let me adjust this uh, just uh, very quickly, do a, a freeze here, and um, if we scroll to the right, Notice here that we're getting a 75% a shading factor applied for winter and a 75% shading factor applied for summer. Uh, and so the, the way that this shading works in PHPP is we have a, a, a several different places where we can input or assign shading factors for things like side reveals or horizon elements, overhangs, uh, bug screens, etc. cetera. Um, but they all combine together in order to yield to us a total shading factor. Uh, and in this case, in PHPP, a shading factor of one would mean um, uh, completely unshaded and a shading factor of zero would mean completely shaded. So if a shading factor of one, 100%, means 100% solar radiation, and then a shading factor of zero, or 0%, means 0% solar radiation. So these shading factors can be read um, uh, in that way. The higher values mean more solar radiation, lower values mean less solar radiation. Um, so uh, just keep that in mind. So where do these shading factors come from? Well, you can see here we're just getting these 75% default shading factors applied. Uh, as, as just that, as defaults, um, because we haven't given any other information about shading uh, to, to the program yet. Now, let me just say right out of the gate that shading factors can be calculated in all sorts of different ways. There are, there are lots of different methods for calculating shading factors, and I'm going to show you one simplified method, which is going to mimic or mirror the um, traditional process of calculating shading factors in the PHPP. So um, the PHPP methodology, which is implemented here in uh, version 9.6, is a sort of simplified um, uh, numerical approach. It's pretty good. It's, it's pretty accurate. It's, um, it's fast. And um, it only requires a, just a few uh, inputs. Um, it's not going to be quite as accurate as some other more sophisticated methods, but it's, it's pretty darn good given how fast it is. And um, so it is one method that you could choose to use for your PassFouse projects. Uh, it is one method that we've implemented within one set of components in the IDF to PH uh, toolkit, but there are other uh, methods, and I'll, I'll probably do some videos on that in the future. We'll, we'll show some other methods using things like Radiance or some of the other ladybug tools, um, uh, or honeybee tools, rather, uh, to do a more, more detailed, more sophisticated shading assessment um, for, our, for our windows. But for now, let's use a simplified numerical calculator that's going to be pretty fast, and, and it's going to work mostly pretty, pretty well for us. So uh, let, me, let me go back and um, 
uh, freeze all this, and let's shrink this down. So let's go back to our, our rhino and our grasshopper scene here and talk about how the shading factors are being applied. So again, by default, every window is going to have a 75% shading factor applied to it. So if we want to calculate a different shading factor, if we have a different shading situation and we want to calculate those shading factors um, explicitly, how can we how can we do that? Well, so I'll show a couple of different a couple different options here. I'm going to do the shading calculation right after I've created the windows. So before I start building the rooms, but after I create the windows. So let me zoom out a little bit here. Remember, we build our zones, we add some windows. We build our rooms, and then we export everything to our Energy Plus model here. So I'm going to give us a little bit more room here and make some space for uh, the shading calculation. So I'm going to um, add another divider, and I'll give us a heading so that we know what we're up to here. We'll call this uh, Calc Shading Factors. So this is going to calc the shading, calculate the shading factors for the windows. So we have our honeybee zone. So we have our honeybee zone coming out of our window um, window window builder, right? So we built our windows and we added our windows to the honeybee zone. So here's our honeybee zone. And what we want to do is we want to we want to explicitly set the window shading factors for all the windows on that zone. So we can do that a couple ways, but um, uh, one way we can do that here is with this um, apply window shading factors. So I can drop that onto the panel here. And what does it take as input? It's going to take the honeybee zones, a list of the window names, the winter shading factors to use, and the summer shading factors to use. All right, so let's first of all add our honeybee zone. So there's our honeybee zone. Now it wants a list of the window names. So we can get that in a couple different places, but I could also, I could just take this window names output and drop it right in over here. And notice we're getting a warning now, and it's saying, uh, what's it saying? It's saying, uh, the number of windows doesn't match the shading factor inputs. So I, I input two windows, but I haven't given any inputs for the winter or summer shading factors, and so it's just going to apply that 75% by default. So if I want to override those values, I, I absolutely can. I could say 0.6. Uh, make that multi-line, uh, and so we're applying these one window at a time, uh, I don't know, 0.45, and we'll apply those as the winter uh, shading factors, and then let's do some summer shading factors, we'll say 0.34 and um, 0.78, I don't know, I'm just making these numbers up as we go, which is obviously not an ideal way to calculate shading factors, to just make them up. Uh, so but I just want to show that this how this is working, so let me, I shouldn't have un unfrozen that so let me freeze this again and let's go to the left here so there's our there's our uh, winter and summer shading factor 75 percent so uh, all I need to do in order to pass this along is now replace the honeybee zones input on my room builder with this new modified honeybee zone and notice now that these shading factors update to match the shading factors that I just input here so that's fine. So we can do it that way. We can just we can just override the shading factors. We can explicitly add in shading factors. Now, where do these shading factors come from? Well, just making them up whole cloth, out of, pulling them out of the air is not the right way to do that. But maybe they came from a from a, a ladybug or honeybee tools um, a, a rig where we do some radiance and some radiation analysis, and we calculate those shading factors in some you know outside cluster or um, or or setup. Right. And, and if that's the case, then I can just pass them in to this apply shading factors tool here. So, so it is not always the case that you have to calculate these using IDF to pH tools. You could, you know, do this using ladybug and honeybee tools or or some other 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 method. If you use Diva or something like that, there's there's other ways that you could calculate these shading factors. And if that's the case, you can just apply them using this applier right here. But if you do have to calculate these factors, if you do need to calculate the, the actual factors that you're going to use, there are a couple of simplified tools that we've included here um, uh, with, the, with our, our IDF to pH toolkit. So first of all, there's this calc window shading factors, simple. So this is a simplified numerical window shading factor calculation. 
You can see here it's going to take some input. It's going to take a, a run it, so a boolean, set that to true to turn it on. It does need a latitude, so it needs to know the latitude of the location where the, the building is. So we'll, we'll, we'll pull that out of our EPW file in a minute. It needs the Honeybee Zones input. It will accept some input for window surrounds. So if your window is installed in the in the wall and uh, the, the wall itself is going to shade the window, it will have a top, a left and a right, a top and a bottom surround. And so it will accept an input of window surrounds. Um, it will accept an input for the building surfaces themselves. So if the building surfaces or, or because the building surfaces are going to um, shade the windows, it will accept that as input. Um, uh, and then lastly, it will accept any additional shading elements. So if you have trees or overhangs or, you know, uh, eaves or trellises or anything like that, you can pass that in as an explicit shading surface. So those additional shading surfaces can all be, be added there as, as well. So um, the one trick to this component, the one trick to this component is this guy here, this building surfaces. Notice that the, the, the um, explanation says um, the it, it works um, if you pass in the honeybee zone surfaces, so the walls and the roof, with the windows punched out. So we need to we need to create some surfaces with some holes in them, and you can do that using the IDF to PH create window reveals component to automatically create that geometry. Of course, you can also create that geometry yourself. So you could use native um, grasshopper tools to. Um, to uh, uh, calculate all of that geometry um, yourself. But, you, but we do include a, a, a simplified tool to, to uh, let you do at least that much. So to do that, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to use this Create Window Reveals tool. And this is going to inset the windows in the wall. It's going to build the, the reveals around the top, bottom, left, and right. And it's, gonna, it's going to um, output those punched honeybee surfaces, so all the windows, walls, uh, et cetera. So I'm going to drop that onto the canvas here, and you can see we've got a couple of we've got some uh, sort of alignment here. So here's my punched wall surfaces. So this is wall surfaces with some holes in them. So I'm going to connect that up to the building surfaces input. I've got window surrounds, which I'm going to pass into the window surrounds. So surrounds are going to connect to surrounds, and then the honeybee zones are going to connect to honeybee zones. So I've got zones to zones, surrounds to surrounds, and punched surfaces to punched surfaces. All right, so that's good. So these guys are now sort of rigged up as a pair. Let me give a, let me give a Boolean toggle. Uh, so that's going to be our on-off uh, switch. That'll be our on-off. And the only thing this guy needs in order to run is it needs the honeybee zone. So I'm going to input the honeybee zone here. And you can see we're getting something of a warning. What's our warning? Uh, please input the latitude for the project as a number. Um, we can use the ladybug import EPW component to get this value, uh, but by default, it's going to use um, basically 40 degrees north, which is about New York City latitude. So the default there is northern hemisphere uh, centric, um, uh, but that's just the default. You can override that. You can give it whatever number you want. So we might um, connect this up to our EPW file. So way over here in our export to EP Energy Plus, remember we imported this EPW file. So I can um, let me do this. I'll do it this way. I'll, I'll take it. Uh, so I'll just say EPW and do this. There we go. And uh, I'm going to um, display. Oops. Wire display hidden, and let's pull this guy over here. All right, so there's my EPW data, but so that I don't have a bunch of wires going backwards, I you know like to do it with that um, hidden display there. Uh, and let's use our ladybugs. Let's go to ladybug. Where the heck are we, ladybug? And let's open up or uh, import that EPW file. So let me clean up here a little bit. And let's pass the EPW file into this. So this is the native ladybug tool. And the reason that we're going to do this whole thing is because I want the latitude. So I want this latitude value. right? So I want this latitude value, which is about 40 degrees, so 40.65 degrees. So again, kind of New York City, basically. I'm going to pass that into the latitude there. 
Uh, and there we go. So now this guy has all the information he needs to run. Let me just do this. I like to do this sometimes with these Boolean toggles to just sort of make them obvious. So that's our, that's our run. Uh, so everything should be pretty well set up here. Um, the one thing that we uh, might want to do is we might want to set this to move our windows by default. Um, so we'll set that to true. I think it, it is true by default, but let's just make sure that it's true. That means it's going to inset the windows in the wall. Um, so it's going to take the window surface. So right now the window surface is coincident with the wall and it's going to push it into the wall. How far is it going to push it? Well, if we go to our window surround, um, it's going to push it 0.1 meters. So whatever you tell it, whatever you set it here as your install depth, it's going to push it into the building uh, that far. And so it's, it's um, uh, going to uh, sort of um, inset the windows. And that's going to obviously be important for calculating those shading factors. So let's go ahead and run this. We'll set this to true. This runs pretty fast. There's uh, um, not a ton there. And let's see what we get as output. So we get some wintertime shading factors and some summertime shading factors. And remember, high numbers mean a lot of solar radiation. So obviously, these windows are very unshaded. There's almost nothing that is shading them. We could add some shading objects. So we could, let me just make sure what layer am I on? Yeah, so let's make a shading layer and we'll add ourselves, we'll put ourselves in a shading layer so that we don't accidentally feed into any of those other pipelines. Let's make a shading object. Let's say, I don't know, let's add a, let's add a, a building next door or something like that. Okay, so let's say this is another building next door to the south of our building. Um, I mean, we could draw it as a building, right? We could, you know, draw it as a whole building. But really, the only thing that I'm interested in is that front surface. That's going to be what causes the shading. So these shading factors haven't changed, and that's because we haven't we haven't brought that new shading object into our scene yet. So I'm actually going to bring that in as a a reference. Do it this way. Um, just to make it uh, explicit. And so this is our, we'll call this the south neighbor. And as soon as I pass this into my shading surfaces element here, you should see that these numbers change dramatically. They go way down. And depending on how far away this guy is from my, from my building, you'll notice that these numbers are going to change quite a bit. Right? And so that's pretty fast as well. So uh, depending on where this is, we're going to get different numbers. Remember, high numbers mean more radiation. Lower numbers mean less radiation. So the closer this gets to the building, the lower these numbers get, the more shaded these south-facing windows are for obvious reasons. So this is sort of reaching out and finding those shading objects. If you want to see exactly what it's actually um, what it's actually finding, you can use this check lines output and just connect it up to to a sort of um, geometry output. And notice here, you'll see these sort of trace lines. So this window is reaching out and finding that geometry. And so if we pull it closer, notice those check lines move with the geometry there, right? So it's sort of finding all of those elements. Um, you can see here that it's reaching, it's sort of reaching out and finding any objects out in the scene. It's also sort of reaching out to the side on both sides. It's reaching out and finding the top reveal and overhangs and things like that. So this is sort of um, taking, each window is sort of looking around in the scene and sort of trying to find any shading objects. And then it's calculating a shading factor based on the uh, sort of numerical values, sort of how far away and how tall, all of that type of stuff is being taken into account there as it calculates those shading factors. So that's fine. That's just a sort of preview to help us sort of see what's happening. But what we'd really like to do is we'd really like to take these outputs and now pass them over to this apply shading factor. So I'm going to delete these guys, get these off, uh, delete these. Notice this goes back to 75% shading factor. And I'm going to take my honeybee zone output, connect it to the honeybee zone input. I'm going to take my window names. So this are in the right order and put them in my window names. And I'm going to take the winter shading factors and connect them to the winter shading factors, and the summer shading factors, and connect them to the summer shading factors. And notice now that our, bring this down so it's a little more manageable, notice now our 
24% or 25%, so 25%, uh, 23%, or 23%. Uh, so these numbers are now streaming through into our PHPP. So what are these going to do? How does this actually affect our PHPP? Let me bring this over here so it's a little cleaner. Let me clean this up a little bit. There we go. Um, Take that away. There we go. Um, so how is this going to affect our PHPP? Uh, well, if we go to our PHPP and we take a look at our heating, our wintertime heating. So notice here, here's our south radiation. So we currently have 745 kilowatt hours per year of south-facing solar gain, of, of south radiation. Let me shrink this a little bit so you can sort of see this as we, as we change. So as I adjust the position of this shading object, uh, we'll see what happens to that 745. So as I pull this building away from the window, notice my solar radiation jumps by you know, double goes up to 2,200 kilowatt hours uh, per year. And as I bring this shading closer, notice that the um, solar radiation drops, uh, drops precipitously. And as I get even closer than that, the solar radiation is going to start to get towards zero. As I, as I get almost fully shaded, the, um, the solar radiation there is going to move towards zero. And if I pull it this uh, neighbor way far away, notice my radiation goes way up um, uh, to almost its, almost its maximum. So the, the shading uh, objects in the scene are going to affect your shading factors, and those are going to affect your total solar gain. Now, obviously, we only have south-facing windows in this case, but if we had windows on other sides, um, you know, all of the shading geometry in the scene would get taken into account by this shading calculator. So obviously, nice and fast. Um, it's relatively accurate. It's pretty darn accurate, especially given how fast it is. Let me clean this up a little bit. Uh, given how fast it is, it's a really um, quite sophisticated uh, method that the folks at PHI um, uh, came up with here, and um, you know, really impressive overall. Um, uh, and. Uh, but I guess I will, so the one thing I'll say though is that this is not the only method. There are many other methods for calculating shading factors um, of greater or lesser sophistication. Um, this is a really good method, it's a nice simple method, um, but you know, with certain types of shading, trees, um, you know, lots of filigreed elements like railings or screens or scrims or something, you know, this type of thing, um, asymmetric shading, this type of thing is going to become less, le much less accurate. And so there are other methods that we might like that would maybe work a little better. So perhaps we would use some ladybug methods, some honeybee methods, maybe we would use some other ray trace methods, maybe we got some diva methods. There's all sorts of ways that we can calculate those shading factors. Uh, and that would sort of replace these guys here. So these guys you can swap out for all sorts of other components, but in some way, shape, or form, you're going to apply those numeric shading factors here to the apply window shading factors. Those are going to flow through into the PHPP and ultimately end up as numeric shading factors in the shading worksheet. So no matter how you do it, they're going to end up as numeric shading factors that's going to flow through into our overall energy model. So at this point, I think we've pretty well exhausted the envelope of our building. Now, there are some other things that we could talk about. We could talk about ground contact surfaces. There's you know, maybe a, a little other level of detail that we could add. But by and large, we've got most of our, um, most of our building envelope built out. We are able, we have control over parameter assignment and materials and constructions. We add windows, we can add windows on the fly and adjust their parameters at any time. The number of windows, the size of windows, we're able to calculate the shading factors sort of in real time uh, as, as we go here. And all of that is flowing through into both our Energy Plus model. So at any point, I could go calculate the uh, Energy Plus simulation and it's flowing through into our PHPP model, and we're getting those live results on our PHPP uh, Excel, Excel Energy model there. Uh, so we uh, have everything pretty well working here. I think we'll, we'll cut this off at this point. Um, and when we come back in, in the next uh, series of videos, we will start to flesh out some of the um, some of the system information for our building. So we'll start to look at things like fresh air ventilation systems, heating and cooling systems. We'll talk about fresh air ventilation flow rates and schedules. Uh, we'll talk about occupancy, and we'll talk about how uh, we uh, connect to the Energy Plus um, uh, occupancy schedules and, and um, built-in um, built defaults, et cetera. 
So a lot yet to go through um, in order to get our, our sort of fully fully rigged up, uh, uh, completed model. But um, this gets us a lot of the way there. And um, the basic workflow here is exactly what you would use on, on pretty much any project of, of any level of complexity. You may have a lot more elements to manage, but um, the, the basic workflow is, is sort of just as we've uh, illustrated it here. So I hope that makes sense. Um, uh, obviously, if um, uh, you're... you're, you're testing this out or trying this out and you're having trouble with anything, you know, feel free to get in touch with us, uh, drop us a line. We, we would um, uh, be happy to answer any questions that, that you might have about it. Um, but um, uh, hopefully that's helpful and um, hopefully you're you're able to follow along to this point. Hopefully you, you have a, a working streaming example as well and um, you're able to get all your get all your geometry into your PHPP. All right. Thanks everyone for being with us. And um, as I said, I'll, I'll see you in the next series when we when we pick this up and start to, to flesh out the systems of our passive house building here. All right. Thanks.